this second part of the video i get to share with you guys the pros and cons of being an au pair they, they are always pros and they're always cons and you need to know that so um moving to europe is fun i uh, first thing you will meet a lot of new people you make new friends uh, and that is always a plus you get to live abroad away from uh, you know what you've always known and what you grew up seeing uh, and it is such a good opportunity really and it exposes you to a lot of things and i am grateful that actually uh, through operating i got to see the world and it can be shocking at first <laughs> because yeah kenya and denmark are two different countries and yeah you get to travel around europe or within your host uh, country and yeah depending on where you're located for example when you're in brussels uh, you can literally move uh, everywhere in europe because it's very central and that is a uh, really um, advantageous if you're somebody who loves to travel uh, then you should give brussels a try for denmark you can also travel a lot like europe is such a small continent i would say uh, that uh, you can easily travel to the neighboring countries like it's easy to get cheap flights and to travel like to Den to sorry to sweden you can go by train to travel to norway you can go by train or by flight it's like less than a two hour flight to go to france is like uh, less than a two hour flight to go to germany like so you have so many opportunities of traveling around europe uh, another pro is that you also get the opportunity to learn a new culture you will be surprised by how different uh, people live in these countries and you get to try new foods you get to to see and learn how they uh, how they live and how they raise their kids which might be shocking at first because uh, in Africa or in Kenya we were smacked and shouted at but in Europe those people don't hit their kids so don't raise your hand uh, at anybody's kid out there or else you might find yourself in big big trouble uh, just talk to them they might be very hard-headed but we just learn to breathe and be calm yeah it's not easy but that's how they do it so through operating you also uh live expense free no rent no paying for food no paying for transportation but this part or oh, actually depends on uh if you pick up kids from school the family also gets to uh, pay for your insurance so apart from having free lodging free food uh, you also your insurance is also covered you get to teach uh, them your culture not only really learn their culture but you also get to teach them about your culture and uh, it can be mind-blowing by um, just how much um, stereotypical people are about uh, how africa in general or how kenya is and uh yeah you will hear crazy stories so it was a good opportunity for me to you know just um tell the kids particularly the kids that it's not what they hear or it's not what they see on tv and yeah it's a good opportunity you need to teach them and also uh, be uh, open to sharing your culture because it is a cultural exchange so you should not only be learning about their culture but also teaching them about your culture you also get to learn about life skills uh, be more responsible uh, so you get to learn how to cook new foods you haven't been exposed to you know taking care of kids or just cleaning and stuff around the house <laughs> you have your freedom as an okay you can move around freely uh you are allowed to uh you know 
uh, yeah. visit people if you have your own room some families allow you to invite uh, your friends over or even invite somebody from your home country like it really depends with the family so if you get a good family like your opera experience will be amazing so um just keep your fingers crossed to get the, the right fit let's talk about the cons of being an au pair first and foremost uh, it would be language barrier with the kids so you you if you move to denmark or to belgium uh, it's the possibilities are the kids will be speaking danish in denmark and speaking french in belgium and when they do not speak english and you yourself you don't speak their language communication becomes very difficult sometimes a kid asks for something and you don't understand and then they get frustrated and they start screaming and maybe you think that they don't like you but it's just because of the language barrier but that's why i say you need to uh, get enrolled into a language course so that at least you get some basic uh, knowledge of their language to be able to communicate a little bit better with them children you really don't know them until you get to live your life with them every single day seeing them in the morning in the afternoon and in the evening and they can be very difficult especially uh, when they undermine your authority so this um, happens a lot and uh, with uh, western kids uh, they tend to be raised in a very free way and their parents sometimes they are not very strict with them so if you you are brought up in an african home you know that you cannot shout at your parents you cannot scream you cannot talk back and when you get their kids some kids most of them just do whatever they want to do and when you uh, move in uh, and you try to tell them something or correct them they shout at you some might kick you so i would advise that you just talk to the parents and try to have them explain to the kids that what you say must be done or it will have consequences consequences in that you don't beat them you don't shout at them but you can they can give you um the right to take away screen time for example they are very dependent uh, on screens like or watching uh, things on their ipad or on tv so like when they do something wrong you tell them uh, i'm gonna take your ipad away for 30 minutes or for a day uh, because you did this and that or if, if they give you um, a go ahead to put them on uh naughty the naughty corner so it really depends with the family and how they want you to also help um you know just bringing up a more responsible and more respectful child it comes down to what the family wants uh living with a family um might be a setting that doesn't give you uh privacy so you will definitely have less privacy even in the room that you have uh don't forget that this is it's your home and it's also your working uh working place it also makes it difficult to have privacy because sometimes they don't understand why so maybe uh, this was uh, one of the kids room and they got moved somewhere else or maybe it was their playroom and now there's somebody living in it so sometimes they want to come in and start playing in your room so just talk to the family and have them explain to the kids prior your arrival that will be hosting um, an au pair she will be like a big sister to you or a big brother to you and this will be their room so before you come in you have to knock and when it's a time off and she's in there you should not go in and disturb her so that really kind of helps you know it gives you um some peace knowing that when it's your time off or when you're in your room nobody's going to you know just yank the door handle and walk straight in without knocking you might be naked and then what do you do money you will not make a lot of money and i think denmark is probably one of the best paying uh, countries so they pay at the moment 4500 danish krona per month and this money is taxable so they tax eight percent of it so 4500 danish krona is about uh, let me see 
78,000 Kenyan shillings and that's a lot of money if in Kenya you get 30 or even 20 or, or 15,000 or nothing if you're just done with your high school. So I'd say it's good money but also if you have a lot of responsibilities back at home it might be just a bit of a pinch but with 78,000 which is 600 uh, euros I think it's, uh, it's good money if you budget yourself well but if if you have a lot of things to do it might be just too little for you so it all comes down to how you manage your finances the most um the most i think this is one of the most difficult things to come into terms with when you are an au pair is the different expectations so you as an au pair you go through the contract and you tell yourself ah it's not that bad there isn't much to do i only work 30 hours a week and that's it but on the other hand once you move there the family kind of uh, some families they have more expectations so when you get there they have so much uh, they see oh there's an extra set of hands here uh Sometimes they take advantage and uh, you they ask for too much. They ask for things that you are not supposed to do. And it gets very frustrating because sometimes you feel like it's not easy to say, you no, know, you live with these people. And yeah, I don't know. I just feel like uh, sometimes you need to sit them down and talk to them and maybe remind them of what your contract says uh, don't be afraid to negotiate with them if they ask more of you you can ask them to maybe give you uh, some extra time off or maybe pay you uh, some extra cash and like that it's a win-win for both parties uh, things you need to know before you become an au pair before you jump into this au pairing journey what do you need to do so click on the next video and i hope that this information has been helpful to you uh, do share your experiences down below and if there is any information that you would want me to share uh, concerning this topic do let me know in the comment section thank you and stay safe see you next time